The majority of people who believe anything about God believe that the Ten Commandments came directly from God and they were written down on stone tablets by Moses. I have been a Christian all my life and I believe that I still am, but I sincerely hope that those Ten Commandments were not dictated by God. Here's my reasons why. The Ten Commandments are listed in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5. In both places we have this statement in the middle of the commandments. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. In other words, if you believe that there is a God, and that God is the Judeo-Christian God, then that same God will punish your children, grandchildren and beyond, if you don't follow the Ten Commandments. Do you really want to believe in a God that says that? I might go as far as to accept that I may be punished for something which I've done, but my children, grandchildren and beyond. I mean, I don't want to sound sarcastic, irreverent or angry, but you must be joking. Over a thousand years later, Jesus had something to say about children, and it was just the opposite. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them, but the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And then in Matthew chapter 18, in the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. So before we've even started to examine the Ten Commandments, we have a major contradiction. What the writer of Matthew thought that Jesus had said is the opposite of what the writer of Exodus thought that God had said. There are no prizes for guessing who is most likely to be right. Could it be that these verses are simply a comparison? How God will punish for a short time, that is, a few generations, compared with him blessing for a very long time, a thousand generations. I'm not so sure. A few generations up to say your great-great-grandchildren is still a long time. And if God is going to bless for a thousand generations, how would that work out if just one descendant happened to be a murderer? a rapist, a warlord, an ethnic cleansing dictator, and so on. None of it makes any sense, even if you interpret it non-literally. The Ten Commandments are complete and make sufficient sense without these two verses in the first place. So why are they there? The most likely explanation is that they were added later by an over-enthusiastic translator or court scribe as ancient texts were copied over and over many times. So let me make this perfectly plain at this stage. The Bible is man-made. It was not dictated by God, and at least 75% of it was not inspired by God. And we shall be thankful that it wasn't, because it is so full of the most extraordinary contradictions, the most awful violence imaginable, and the writers cannot agree on the basic issues of morality, theology and doctrine. But having said all that, don't forget there is still 25% left. Here we have a totally different Bible, made up of eternal truths, revelation and fulfilled prophecy. That 25% is mixed in along with the rest like a huge stir-fry and takes some finding. But it is there if you have the patience and determination to find it. Jesus must also have read the Hebrew Old Testament and must have known about this problem. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. 
Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. But I will come back to that later. Let's return to the subject of this video, the Ten Commandments. Were these two verses added later by a translator or scribe? Well, they have all the appearance of being so, but we will never know for sure. What we need to do is see if there is a pattern in the rest of the Old Testament and whether these verses follow that pattern. In part two, we will find that there is a pattern. In every chapter of the Old Testament, we find unnecessary exaggerations, an obsession with praising God for everything, whether good or bad, and God being responsible for virtually everything that happens. Again, both good and bad. But before I leave part one, think about this bombshell. Just a few months after the commandments were given, the same person who had put the Ten Commandments together ordered a tribe of the Israelites to murder their own friend, neighbour and brother because they had started worshipping other gods. Then Moses said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Each man strap a sword to his side Go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbour. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. So what does that say about the Ten Commandments, of which one is, You shall not kill. Again I say, I sincerely hope those commandments were not given by God.